Aloha! Very few things say Hawaii like hibiscus. This big bruiser behind me is um, one of the native hibiscus here. This is a Viamia White from uh, Kauai at Viamia Canyon. Uh, there aren't really that many of the hibiscus that are grown here that are natives. Most of them are what we call Chinese hibiscus and the hybrids. Um, they grow very, very well here in Hawaii. And because of that, I've always asked myself the question, why do Hawaiian hibiscus plants usually look shabbier than the ones I see in California? And I finally figured it out. And that's because California's mainland climate, it gets cold once in a while. The hibiscus get frozen. We have to prune them. And so the pruning action on the plants uh, on the mainland causes them to look tidy, nice, green, leafy, and dense with a lot of flowers. Uh, here on the island, because we never freeze, the plants like this Viamia white are just left to grow and grow and grow into trees. This guy here will get up oh, over 30 feet high and at least that wide. It's up there, as you can see. And that's one plant, and it goes from here all the way over there. That one's a 10 year old, hardly ever pruned, uh, never sized at least. And so that's uh, how big these things can get. Well, I decided to start trimming the hibiscus in the landscape around my house much more regularly. Now that we live here all the time, I can go out every few months and clip away at the hibiscus some. And it has worked out really well, but I've gotten some surprises because not all hibiscus varieties grow the same way. And so they all respond different to being heavily pruned. Right here are two hibiscus that are right outside my dining room. Uh, one of them is the Red Flowered Empire, and the other one is a pink double called Kona Princess. These are really fast growing, they're strong growing, and they don't like being cut down short. Uh, as soon as I cut them, the first thing they do is regrow with a vengeance, and then want to be picky about producing their beautiful flowers. You can see here how tall they are compared to me. Uh, these were pruned down to two feet recently, and they are just now deciding that they're going to begin to rebloom. Now, this little beauty right here is Hula Girl. Hula Girl got pruned down to about 12 inches not long ago. And she came back again with a vengeance, producing these enormous blooms and just clusters. Yeah, there are just so many blooms in this little bush. So obviously, this is a hibiscus that is entirely suitable for short pruning, like a rose garden. Now, that's kind of what I've been trying to do with these, is using them the same way I used to use roses on the mainland in my gardens. Keeping them short, keeping them clipped well, and hopefully keeping them in flower. Now, right over here, I didn't cut this one quite as short. This is a sherry baby, and uh, she's coming back, and she's beginning to produce blooms, but uh, it sure didn't bounce back like Hula Girl did. And this is gold dust over here that was pruned recently. And it too also looks a little bit rough. Well, there's an empire flower that's open. Uh, this one responded a little bit better uh, than the one over by the dining room when I cut it back. It's, it's staying a little smaller and it's budding up nicely. I don't know what the name of this pink one is but pruning it creates this strangest looking plant. This is seminal here, uh, and seminal it is responding well to a hard pruning. Let's take it down to about a foot. A um, month later or so, we're at about three feet now. I'm seeing really good buds forming. This is a good pink colored hibiscus. Uh, and so this one responds really well again to being pruned like rose bushes. Because the hibiscus grow so well in this area, don't require much fertilizer. They seem to be able to grab their own plant food out of the soil uh, quite naturally here. And so other crops can't do that so well. They're not as well adapted. And so I've begun to use the hibiscus, which are back here, as stick mulch from my blueberries. And so all the prunings of the hibiscus here in the foreground 
are all laid down as a mulch around the blueberries. I'm continuing on down to the dragon fruit over there too. Eventually we'll stick mulch them too. After I prune enough times, I let the leaves drop right off here in the landscape. It uh, keeps the weeds down, mulches, the wood gradually rots away. As it accumulates around the base of the plants, it gives me a surface to walk on so that I don't get muddy feet when it's raining. So it eventually becomes a wood mulch grinding under feet. Uh, I've been adding the, the blueberry prunings to it also. So you can see there are just so many different kinds of hibiscus. It's not just one single thing. They all act a little different in the garden. So each has their own personality. You're going to kind of figure out by trial and error where you might use one. But if you need plants that do grow really large, the Viamia white is a great choice. And here in Hawaii, it is a native, so that's really cool too. Otherwise, we have our Chinese hibiscus that grow tall like the Kona Princess here, or the Empire, really nice, big, fast-growing plants. Uh, Hula Girl, Gold Dust, they seem a little more conservative. Uh, Seminoles, somewhere in between. But most of these really look better when you treat your hibiscus as if they're a rose garden, where you go out and you prune the plants back every time they start to get a little bit too much size to them. Then they get nice and leafy like the one next to me, really dense and become very floral. Uh, a nice thing. So, hang loose, wear more hibiscus in your hair. Happy gardening.